Mr. President, I am deeply honored to participate in this joint debate in the General Assembly today, and I extend my heartfelt congratulations to Croatia for their exceptional leadership of the Peacebuilding Commission last year, and to Brazil for the manner in which they have led the Commission so far this year. The PBC report of 2023 is testimony to the positive initiatives taken by the Commission, and the forward-looking agenda is well designed to address peacebuilding challenges and sustaining peace in contemporary conflict settings. The emphasis on regional maritime security, transnational organized crime, and terrorism brings the right perspective to peace building. We believe these gains need to be consolidated with more discussion, particularly in the context of expansion of terrorism in West Africa and Sahel. As we are all aware, the main purposes of the Peace Building Commission are to bring together all relevant actors to promote post-conflict peace building and recovery, to support development of integrated strategies towards sustainable development, and to ensure predictable resources for early recovery. To this end, we appreciate the work of the Peace Building Commission in its support for regional peace initiatives, including the International Conference on the Great Lakes Region-led Luanda Process, and the East Africa community-led Nairobi process. We also appreciate the PBC's sustained focus on key issues such as the full, equal, and meaningful participation of women in decision-making and political processes, advancing inclusive security sector reforms, as well as advancing the institutionalization of the youth, peace, and security agenda. The Commission's emphasis on education as a prevention and resilience building mechanism underscores its progressive outlook towards peace building. Education is a key component for building and sustaining peace. Mr. President, India has always played an important role in both peacekeeping and peace building. We have engaged in peace building through extensive development partnerships with countries in the global south. The cumulative value of India's developmental projects now exceeds 40 billion US dollars, encompassing soft loans, grants, and capacity building training programs. I would like to highlight the India UN Development Partnership Fund established in 2017 as a testament to India's unwavering commitment to multilateralism and global development. In just five years, the fund has supported 75 South owned, South led development projects in partnership with 56 developing countries. Chair, our experience in peace building, both bilateral as well as through the PBC, guides us to put forth the following observations. First, PBC has no direct conflict prevention mandate or role. What it has, perhaps, is an implied role in not permitting relapse of conflict. If PBC is to be given explicit conflict prevention rule, its mandate needs to be revised. It cannot be done through subjective interpretation. Secondly, on substantive sessions, uh, correction, substantive settings, including climate change, we need to avoid duplication of rule of other UN organs, oblique entities. Third, PBC's role in marshalling resources for post-conflict recovery remains critical. We hope that the PBC finds more success on this front. There is also need for greater oversight on the administration of the peace building fund. Last, there needs to be greater synergy between peacekeeping and peace building, especially where there are overlaps. Efforts at DDR and capacity building of security institutions will be more effective and efficient if the PBC and peace operations collaborate more meaningfully. Finally, Mr. President, I assure you of India's sustained commitment to the purposes of peace building, and we look for forward to engaging constructively on the forthcoming peace building architecture review. Thank you.